we're almost done showing off the demo. I've got um, basic reporting. So you can go in here and you can set some basic reports. You have things like an active user report, retention report, um, top spenders, user feedback, and, and, and so forth. So these are various reports we have. And of course, we're always adding new reports into the system. We also have a pretty robust analytics system. So let's go ahead and, and, and take a look at that analytics system and see what's going on here. So if you think about analytics, it's about processing event data. And so our server side is constantly generating events for players as they play the games. And our event system is tied to the notion of a player profile. So every player has a profile on the analytics system. And what I'm looking at right now is I'm looking at this particular player's, this is that same James Tablet player we saw earlier. I'm looking at this player's profile here in the analytics system. And what I'm seeing is I'm seeing there's a whole bunch of properties for this player. Some of these properties, like days since last visit, are generated dynamically. They're set uh, uh, by code. Other properties, like stat monster kills, this is an example of a property being set um, in the analytics system from one of those player stats. Likewise, VC, virtual currencies, uh, these are uh, every time the virtu virtual currency amount changes, it gets updated here in the analytics system. And these typically, there's about a 15 or 20 minute lag between when uh, something happens to the player and when that event data shows up here in the analytics system. So it's not real time, but it's pretty close to real time. So we have these properties. We also have an event history. And the event history is every single event that's ever happened to the player gets logged, and you can actually look them up here in the event history, you know, along with the time when it happened. Uh, and then a description of that particular event name. So a lot of these events are being generated automatically by the server on the server side. So for example, user granted item. Every time a player gets given an item, an event gets logged showing what item got given to the player and when. Uh, you've got, for example, events like, um, you know, going back to the very top here, you can see the very first event here was, you know, the initial login. So the player logged in for the first time. You get things like every time a stat changes, stat changed event. Every time you get virtual currency, every time they consume an item. These are all things triggering events. We also have events like Fought Battle. Fought Battle is an example of an event that's actually being logged from the client, from your game code. And it's really easy to, to do these kinds of things. If you look at the um, analytics, here is log event. You just call a log event, and you pass in uh, the event name and the body, and it will then eventually show up in the analytics system as an event. In this case, Fought Battle is a good example of that. Once these events are in the system, you can use them in a couple different ways. You can create segments. A segment is a subset of players uh, defined by those properties. So in this case, actually a more interesting one. Let's take a look at lapsed user. Lapsed user is an example of a user where the number of days since last visit is greater than seven, and their player level is greater than ten. So these are all players of ten or, or greater who haven't logged in for a week or more. And once you've got a segment like this defined, you can do things like going back to my uh, tool here on the promotions tab. You can do things like doing push notifications to those customer segments. At the moment, the only thing we allow you to do with these segments is push notifications. But soon, we're going to have a whole bunch of additional actions you can do on a player segment, like granting items, uh, triggering messages, uh, and, and so forth. So these segments are going to become pretty powerful. Uh, segments are based solely on those properties you saw earlier. So if I add a filter, you'll see the only fields that are accessible to me here are all fields that you saw for that player based on the properties. So if I don't want to do uh, what I also have available to me, though, is the behavior. Behavior is like a segment, only it's actually based off of the event history, the actual events themselves. So here's an, a behavior called completed tutorial. And you can see the different steps. Initial login, followed any time later by fought battle, followed any time later by purchase a catalog item called key, followed any time later, with, or, sorry, followed within one day by unlocking a container called treasure chest. So this is actually a series of steps that defines uh, a, a set of users. And once you've got these steps defined, you can do things like uh, use them to, to pick out users for doing different actions on. You can also do things like a funnel analysis. A funnel analysis is where you go through and figure out what percentage of players uh, actually successfully completed each of those steps. And in this case, when I do a funnel analysis, it's not only showing me that, it's actually going to show to me grouped by segments. So for each of the different segments of my players, I'm going to see how those different players uh, successfully completed that behavior chain or not. And that's actually fairly, fairly powerful. But it, it can take a little bit of time to generate these because our Amazon, it's all based on top of Amazon Redshift. And Amazon Redshift is, is, is fast, but it's aggregating, in this case, across a very large amount of data. So 
I'm actually not going to let this keep running. I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe come back to this. So that is uh, shows you kind of funnel analysis and behavior analysis. So let's go ahead now and show you a demo. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring up that, that same James tablet player that I was looking at earlier. And uh, yeah, by the way, you can see now that this, the funnel has now completed. So you can see for all those different segments, I can see what the conversion rate was for that thing. So given any player at all, 5.26 converted and did that entire tutorial. You can see uh, I had 114 who logged in, I had eight who fought a battle, six who purchased, and six who unlocked a container. So that's kind of the 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 the, the ratio of that particular funnel. Not not so great if this is a game.